Hey guys, how's everybody doing? This is Mike with Imperial Props Studios, Muncie, Indiana, and this is documentary video number two of Project Vicky 2. This is a fiberglass mannequin that I ordered online, and she came here about two weeks ago. Uh, and as you can see, she separates into uh, six pieces there, the <clears throat> upper torso, lower body half, waist and legs, two arms and two hands. Uh, standing up, she's like 5'10", and uh, the mannequin, when all put together, it's what I call uh, straight standing, forward facing mannequin with her arms and hands straight down to her sides which makes it really nice for posing uh, in any pose you want to uh, make it so on and so on and so on now uh, the reason it looks like it does right now this and some of it ain't quite dry yet as you can see this is uh, latex rubber for the uh, inner mold shell that I've done over top and the same with with the bottom half here um, if you cut this down or whatever it's about a sixteenth inch thick and this is a special effects latex rubber it's not necessarily uh, mold making latex rubber uh, which is good stuff too and uh, you could go either way but I prefer to make this uh, mold make the mold out of this latex rubber because it's very very stretchy very very strong I wouldn't say it's uh, better than regular mold making latex but it's just a really good blend of latex uh, compared to other brands uh, now the arms we're doing all the arms and the, the hands separate as you can see there is the uh, mounting hook for the arms to go back on. Uh, the reason I'm doing the arms separate is because this surface here, when you pull it off and uh, put it back on, we're going to have a nice flat edge to mount up with the, uh, the shoulder joint there when it's all done. Now, uh, this is basically uh, pretty much the first step of uh, recreating this mannequin. Uh, the next step from here is going to be making a mother mold out of fiberglass and I'm going to do that by using uh, this regular Sculpey, uh, Sculpey clay and go in and then along the, the outer edges where the seam line is going to be build up a dividing wall uh, for your casting halves. We're going to cast this uh, let's see here, where's the thing at? Yeah. We're going to cast this uh, right in half. Uh, and then uh, the same with the torso, the upper body. We're going to go probably our seam line. Uh, I'm thinking that we're going to go from the top of the skull and right behind the ear uh, to hide the seam line what we can. I think it'll be okay, and then come down just like I said, just right down the, the middle there. Now when it gets all together, uh, the hands, I tried casting these in latex rubber before, and when I pulled the mold off, uh, I'm sure there's a trick to it, but it just stuck all together for me, and basically was just wasted. And latex is not cheap, so you kind of want to, you know, mind what you're doing, and try to do it the right the first time. Uh, when I get that figured out, I'll uh, I'll get that done. And, but for the meantime, uh, you can buy female mannequin hands also online, and this is a really nice set. As you can see, they're really good detailed. Got the uh, the lines and wrinkles in, and so on and so on. I think you can get them for maybe ten to uh, fifteen dollars a pair, which you know. Is okay. That's not that's not real bad for a nice set like this, especially highly detailed. You know, 
Uh, so when it gets all together, we're going to go ahead and just, we're going to use these fiberglass mannequin hands rather than cast them in rubber until I get that figured out how to do that, and then we'll, we'll go with that. The arms the same way we're going to uh, get those in right here. It's the, uh, the butt joint for the wrist to come up with the hands. Okay, and then when we get it all done, like I said, we're going to make a mother mold. Two-piece mother mold for each half and the arms as well out of fiberglass. And then we're going to fill the... Peel this off, cut this in half, peel it off uh, all together and fill up the mold with either uh, silicone, rubber, uh, maybe even a urethane, rubber, flexible foam so on and so on and then the very outer skin will be this stuff here the the latex now this latex here is not I know it looks flesh tone especially right in there where it's not quite dry yet but it hasn't been pigmented yet with any flesh tone uh, I did a, a sample and I don't have it with me right now but it came out really good it came out just as, almost exactly the same tone as the hands, so that'll that'll match up great. And what the uh, what I blah, can't even talk today. How I did that was I took one gallon of the liquid latex and measured it out to a small jar, um, just like this here, uh, spaghetti sauce. One small jar, filled it up with water to about right there. And put in, I think it was two tubes of liquid makeup. Uh, I got the darkest shade I could possibly find. Uh, maybe even three tubes. I think it was two tubes, two one ounce tubes, and another uh, one ounce uh, bottle, glass bottle of makeup. But I, I put it all in there with the water. Uh, shook it up real good, made sure it was all mixed up, and then I dumped that whole mix into the one gallon of liquid latex and mixed it all up and uh, sprayed a few samples. And like I said, it came out just like the hands came out really, really good. Here's my uh, bulk supply a five gallon pail of liquid latex rubber that I got also online uh, uh, a couple weeks ago as well, even. And then you can buy this stuff in uh, just about any size you want. You can get la liquid latex in pints, uh, gallons, or a five-gallon pail, just like this one here. Now, this one is from a company called Monster Makers. Uh, they deal in special effects, so on and so on and so on. And they have anything you could probably imagine to recreate fake human bodies, body parts, uh, also they have a lot of paints uh, that you can airbrush on your model when you get her all done and so on. And that's the plan with this one here. Uh, I'll keep up with you guys and keep you posted how it's coming. And I'm actually kind of excited uh, to get this mold off. Like I said, tomorrow, um, right now it's about like 6 o'clock in the evening. And uh, I'm going to let this dry the same time till tomorrow. And this should be toned in. Uh, and there's a couple places on here too that's the same way. I wanted to make sure I got it coated really good, you know. So uh, let that dry completely all the way. And a heads up on that, guys. If you don't, if you uh, do not let liquid latex dry completely, and I mean thoroughly, when you go to remove your mold, and let's say like right there in the eyes, one little tear, or even if it stretches the slightest and it's not dry, it's, you know, it's still gooey in there, you, you ruin the whole thing. You'll have to start all over. You have to do the whole thing. So I may even wait until, uh, let's see, today's Friday. I may even let this chick set over the weekend uh, I got a shed studio garage outdoors uh, just a small one but it gets really 
uh, hot in there, and uh, I may take her out there to cure the rest of the way, maybe put a fan on her to help. So that's uh, one tip that I can give you guys on making a cast or a mold of anything when you uh, mold it in any kind of rubber or uh, silicone or latex like I have here. Make damn sure that she's all dry everywhere, especially in the uh, the little nooks and crannies, um, other areas, uh, stuff like that. You know, because if you don't, like I said, you go to peel the mold off, uh, you'll ruin it. And believe me, this stuff ain't cheap. Uh, and that's a lot of liquid latex to go to waste. I'd hate to see the whole mold ruined just for a little tear spot on the face or something, you know what I mean? So, anyway, enough of that. Uh, and then uh, I will uh, post part two to Project Vicky 2 momentarily. Stay tuned.